Greg Louganis, considered the greatest diver in history. Breaking records and innovating the sport, Greg was able to make an impact not only in diving, but in society. During a time when diving would receive little attention, along with the issue of gay rights and HIV, four-time Olympic gold medalist Greg Louganis would change this. Along with being a successful diver, Louganis was openly gay and tested positive for HIV, giving him even more attention that he would use to be a worldwide influence as a gay rights activist and a diver. Greg Louganis was born on January 29, 1960. As a child, he was often bullied and experienced depression throughout his years as a teenager. Not only was he beaten up and ridiculed at school for his speech impediment and dark complexion, but he and his sister were also beaten by their father. These hardships caused Greg to turn to drinking and smoking at a young age, but his talents in diving led him in the right direction, making it his way out of the hard life that he was experiencing. My salvation was diving because then I could focus on that. And unfortunately, I mean, if I had a bad workout, I had a bad day. If I had a good workout, I had a great day. I could deal with anything. Louganis first made his mark during the 1976 Olympics in Montreal, where he placed second in the 10 meter platform event and therefore earning himself a silver medal. Despite his second place finish, he was favored for two gold medals in the 1980 Moscow Olympics, but was never able to compete due to a US boycott from the competition that year. This caused Greg to focus hard and prepare even more for the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles, where he would experience a great deal of fame from his accomplishments in the meet. He finished with two gold medals in the 10-meter platform and 3-meter springboard event and broke a record, being the first person to earn above 100 points in the platform event. Yet, even with the success Luganis gained throughout his competition, he would reach his peak of fame in the 1988 Seoul Olympics, where his comeback win and controversial events would make him known worldwide. During the preliminary event of the 1988 Olympics, Luganis had a substantial lead over the other competitors through the first eight dives. When the time came for the ninth dive, Luganis continued his usual preparations of visualizing the dive and mentally preparing himself. He stepped on the board to perform his dive. Greg Luganis had hit his head on the board leaving his audience in shock and putting him in fifth place. He was humiliated, but wanted to continue in the competition as he was still in contention to make it to the finals. He received four stitches to complete his last two dives, which were much harder. Despite being nervous, Luganis was able to complete one of his most difficult dives, the reverse one and a half somersaults with three and a half twists. He executed the dive and as he rose up from the water, he received a thunderous applause with 87.12 points, the highest scoring dive of the competition. With his amazing comeback, Luganis received even more endorsements and was named Athlete of the Year. The public admired him for his courage throughout the competition and he made appearances on various talk shows to talk about his experience. But this was the public's perspective of Greg's comeback win. But in Luganis' eyes, the competition had a totally different meaning. Let's go back to Luganis' ninth dive of the preliminaries. <laughs> When Nuganis hit his head on the board, his mind was exploding with nervous thoughts as he had just been diagnosed with HIV six months ago. His fear of harming someone else was more important to him than his injury, and he feared that if he bled, he could infect other divers or the trainers who had operated on his head. Only a few people knew about his disease, including his coach. He later found out from the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases that there was a very little chance that he could infect someone else. Even though some of his stress and guilt was alleviated, he would still be living with an enormous secret that would eventually need to be revealed to the public. Luganis would be remembered for his experience in the 1988 Olympics due to his amazing comeback, but later after an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 1995, he publicly spoke about being gay and having HIV for the first time, making this a focal point of his legacy. When he revealed his secrets, there was a great controversy. Many thought he was wrong not to say anything during the Olympics because he could have affected the other divers even though it was proven that the chlorine would have killed the virus. All of his endorsements were taken away except for Speedo, and many people thought that he should have his Olympic medals taken. Greg was able to use his attention to bring to the public new views on the issues of HIV and convincing people that it was okay to come out as being gay through his speeches and interviews. After retiring from diving, Luganis went on to aid others in the sport of diving. Not only did he help the US Olympic diving team, but he also exchanged his knowledge of diving with other countries. We talked to Sarah Bacon, a member of the U.S. Olympic diving team, about Luganis' impact in China. Greg Luganis won the Olympics in 84 and 88 on both 
three meter and platform. And at that point in time, uh, the U.S. was unbeatable in diving. We were at the top of the world. China couldn't beat us. Russia couldn't beat us. Nobody could beat us. And then Greg and his coach took a trip to China and taught the Chinese all of our ways. Taught them how to pull belts, how to do trampoline, how to do dry board. Gave them all the equipment that we were using here in the U.S. And then China became really good in the sport and started beating us. Because of Luganus' travels to China, the Chinese divers have gone on to win nine Olympic medals in six Olympic competitions, making them a strong competitor against the United States. Luganus also explored the impacts and issues about HIV in order to inform the public and bring more attention to it. Through donations to the Marques Bonham Center for Sexual Diversity Studies in Toronto, he contributed to the education and issues involving sexual identification. In addition, he continues to work with the Human Rights Campaign to defend the LGBT community and those who are diagnosed with HIV. By doing this, Luganus is able to explore and bring attention to the issues of gay rights and HIV. In an article in Ability Magazine, Luganus explains how he would have various fundraisers to continue to aid the Human Rights Campaign. This included having a swim for equality where people would swim 1.7 miles to raise awareness and funds. Despite Luganus' accomplishments, he encountered great amounts of hostility from the beginning of his retirement. Not only did the public resent him for his secrets during the 1988 Olympics, but as he advocated for gay rights and those diagnosed with HIV, he continued to receive hate. With much of America being against homosexual and gay rights, the public attacked many of Luganus' beliefs and ideas. Luganus would also experience hostility in other countries as he traveled with the U.S. Olympic team to mentor them. In the 2014 Winter Olympics in Russia, he was kicked out of his hotel and was treated badly during the competition. The Russian harassment of Luganus was a direct result of the Russian anti-propaganda law, known to Americans as the anti-gay law. This federal law was created for the purpose of protecting children from information advocating for a denial of traditional family values. In other words, protecting society, mainly children, from gay people. In an interview with CNN, Luganus argued how the anti-gay law in Russia went completely against P6, or Principle 6, of the Olympic Charter, which states that any form of discrimination is incompatible with belonging to the Olympic movement. It's not a safe time to be an LGBT individual in, uh, in Russia. I'm working with uh, really pushing the idea and concept of P6, Principle 6, which states from the IOC Charter, International um, Olympic Committee Charter, that there's no discrimination, that that's a part of the Olympic movement. Um, having the Olympics in Russia kind of co goes totally against uh, the Principle 6 uh, with its anti-propaganda laws. Because of Luganus' voice, he became a leader of the Principle 6 campaign, which began shortly after the Sochi Olympics. This movement was created so that the LGBT community would be treated fairly during the Olympics and Luganus' outspoken beliefs about this issue would not only benefit LGBT athletes in the U.S., but also LGBT athletes around the world. Luganus has created a lasting impact in America, especially on the issue of gay rights and HIV. He has created books and documentaries and has given interviews and speeches about his life to tell people that it is okay to be openly gay. Furthermore, by aiding the Human Rights Campaign, he was able to help earn rights for the LGBT community, such as the legalization of gay marriage. He was also instrumental in changing the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy that was instituted in 1994. This policy prohibited those in the military from harassing gays and lesbians who were closeted, but also didn't allow openly gay members of society to join the military. Luganus was furious because he believed that gay men and women have been serving this country for years. He also said that the policy advocated lying to each other, since only closeted gay people could join the military. His voice helped end the policy in 2011, allowing openly gay and lesbian members of society to join the military. With the short-term and long-term impact Greg Luganus has had on the LGBT community, he has created a legacy, not only in diving, but in society. He has innovated the sport by doing new dives that weren't done at the time, and setting records such as being the first person awarded a perfect score. With his determined efforts to bring change, he has been monumental in gaining more rights for gays and lesbians. He also continues to speak on behalf of gay rights and the issues concerning HIV, and therefore improving lives throughout America.